Hello and welcome back to Shakes here. Today we are working on The Rape of Lucrece, which content warning is about sexual violence towards women. And we are at that point of the poem where we are very much in the thick of it. So if you need to tune out, please do so. I completely understand. But if you want to hear these next couple stanzas, today we're going to take a look at stanzas 73 to 76, which Sextus Tarquinius has made it to Lucretius' bedroom. He while she was asleep, he was very turned on, so he grabbed her breast. She woke up and was scared and was like, why are you doing this? And he's like, I'm doing this because you're so hot that I can't. And I know how bad it is, this thing that I'm doing, but I can't stop doing it. And stanza 73 picks up with this said, he shakes aloft his Roman blade, which like a falcon towering in the skies, coucheth the fowl below with his wings shade, whose crooked beak threats if he mount he dies. So under his insulting falchion lies harmless Lucretia, marking what he tells with trembling fear, as fowl hear falcon's bells. Lucretia, quoth he, this night I must enjoy thee, if thou deny, then force must work my way, for in thy bed I purpose to destroy thee. That done, some worthless slave of thine I'll slay to kill thine honor with thy life's decay, and in thy dead arms do I mean to place him, swearing I slew him, seeing thee embrace him. So thy surviving husband shall remain the scornful mark of every open eye. Thy kinsmen hang their heads at this disdain, thy issue blurred with nameless bastardy. And thou, the author of their obloquy, shalt have thy trespass cited up in rhymes and sung by children in succeeding times. But if thou yield, I rest thy secret friend. The fault unknown is as a thought unacted, a little harm done to a great good end for lawful policy remains enacted. The poison is simple, sometimes is compacted in a pure compound being so applied. His venom in effect is purified. So <laughs> we thought yesterday was a little bit terrifying from her perspective. Today is a little bit worse. The first stanza says that basically she is like a falcon, a bird of prey, is preying on another bird. She is that bird and Sexist Arcanius is the falcon. But then in the second and third stanza, he's like, look, I'm gonna have sex with you tonight, one way or another. I'm gonna have sex with you tonight. And if you say no, what I'm gonna do after I'm done having sex with you is I'm gonna go kill one of your slaves and kill you and put the dead body in your bed so that it looks like you and this slave were having sex and I saved the day by killing him after he killed you. So this is the sort of thing that, you know, people will be telling stories about for years and years and millennia to come kind of a thing. That's, that's his perspective on this. But in this, in the last stanza here, he's like, but if you agree to have sex with me right now, I'll be quiet. Nobody ever has to know. Nothing will ever come of this. It'll, it won't even have to be a thing. So this is the choice that Lucretia is faced with at the moment. Let him this man who is not her husband, to whom she is very faithful, have his way with her and be totally silent about it, or resist, get killed, and then be set up in the afterlife or post her death to look like she was doing things that she should not have been doing. So it's it's really a lose-lose situation for her at this point. And I mean, if you want to talk about nefarious dealings, maybe kudos to Sexist Arcanius for coming up with such nefarious purposes, such, such such nefarious things. He's he's. It seems like he's covered his bases at this point. She can't really 
say no, but that's kind of the point of rape and that would, that's what he was there for. So anyway, if you can stomach it, I'll see you tomorrow for more. Mwah.